Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm hopping along with some of my crafty friends and sharing the latest club kits from Spellbinders with you. I hope you'll stick around to see what I'm going to create with today and find out how you can hop along for more inspiration. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, Spellbinder sends me some of their new club kits to use and share with you here on my channel. In the new year, I have decided that I will be working with the clear stamp and die of the month and one of their newer club kits, their stencil of the month. I will have these two clubs as well as all of the other linked in the description box below if you want to check those out. It is the six of the month, which means if you want to join up, this is the first day you can do that as a new member. I did mention it in the intro, but my video is just one of many in a hop hosted by Lynn of LV Handcrafted. So make sure when you're done with my video that you check out to see what everyone else has created. I'm sure they'll be sharing lots of different clubs and types of projects. The next person in the hop is at the very top of my description box and also down there I have a list of everybody in the hop so you can go check out, see what they created and leave them some love. The January 2024 Clear Stamp and Die of the Month is called Just Because, and it has some fun bee-themed sentiments, a little jar of honey, this pretty floral stamp that you could probably do one at the top and one at the bottom to make a full card, and then some bees and little flowers to go with it. The dies cut out everything except this big floral piece here, so I think this could make a great background and then you could stamp and die cut some of these others and pop them up. This month's stencil club kit is called Lively Floral and it is five four and three quarter by six inch layering stencils. It has a flower with stem and leaves and there are even some sentiments here that you can stencil on as well. On the back of this is what it would look like all stenciled and layered together. Since I haven't had this club yet, this is what I'll be using today. And instead of putting it centered in a card, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For the flower stenciling, I will be using two shades of purple for the flower, and for the leaves, I chose an ink and a green stencil butter. I thought these two made a nice contrast. And finally, for the center of the flowers and the branches, I brought in toffee ink. Off camera, I cut a piece of white cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half, and I added a little bit of adhesive on the back of that and placed it onto the grid paper. I did make sure when I placed it down that I placed it with the lines on the grid, and then I went in with the pencil and outlined three of the corners. This is because I will be moving that piece of cardstock as I stencil. Next, I decided how I wanted to place my flower in each of the corners, and I found it easier if I brought in the whole stack just to see how big the flower was and what it would look like. When I found a good spot for that, I placed down stencil number one, and again, I'm going to use some pencil marks around those outside corners to help with placement later. I will be using a piece of painter's tape as a hinge for the stencil and covering up the areas that I don't want to get inky with some post-it notes. And I can just use these same ones for the entire card. I start the ink blending with the lighter of the purples, Macaron, and I'm going to use circular motions and fill in the petals. Now for this round, I did just try to cover up the stem with my finger, but you'll see that once I flip this around, I ended up putting a post-it note just so I didn't get any color where I didn't want it. 
Now when it was time to rotate it, I did 180 degrees and I used again those pencil marks just to make sure I got the piece of cardstock where I wanted it. I used those same colors for the other corner of the card and when it was done I removed all of the post-its and the tape and brought in stencil number two. I started laying this stencil where those corner marks were. Now keep in mind when you do this you might have to adjust your stencils just a little bit. Take a peek at what is below it to make sure it lines up. For stencil number two I just needed the macaron ink and I stenciled in the two corners just like with stencil number one. Then I removed that and I continued stenciling, doing the leaves and the centers of the flower. And then it was time to do the final one, which had some dots on the centers and it's going to have the leaves that I'll be using the stencil butter on. To ensure that I did not get the stencil butter anywhere I didn't want it, I once again lined the outside with post-it notes and I covered up the detail dots on the flower center. Then I'm just going to use the palette knife, scoop out some stencil butter, and stencil it into all of the openings that are on the cardstock. Now I am newer to paste like this, so it didn't look perfect, but hey, you know what? More practice is going to make it even better. Now once I had this first layer down, I removed all the post-it notes, the tape, I went and cleaned the stencil off and I let this set for about 40 minutes to dry. And here's a look at that after dried, I just love that shine. Now I'm going to rotate it around, get my stencil set back up and do another layer in that second corner. Again, I let it sit and dry well before moving on. After that was all dry, I cut down my piece of cardstock just a little bit and I die cut a rectangle out of the center. I also die cut a scallop rectangle out of a green that I thought matched the stencil butter pretty well. Now I'm going to stamp the sentiment and I chose Hope This Card Finds You Well from a previous stamp of the month. I thought this sentiment would be good for many different occasions. I will be stamping this with stays on jet black ink onto a piece of vellum just so you can see the sentiment but also see the stenciling and stencil butter behind it. Off camera I prepared a dried fig card base with a piece of white cardstock on the inside so the personal message is easy to read. And now all of the pieces of my card are ready so I finished the assembly. The first thing I did was wrap my vellum sentiment around the rectangle stenciled piece and then I placed this onto the scallop green mat. The frame with the stenciling went flat down onto the card base and then for the center I brought in some foam tape and added it to the back to pop that up. Now normally I would add some kind of sparkle or bling here but because the stencil butter was already shiny I left the card as is. And here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created today's card using the newest stencil of the month from Spellbinders, Lively Floral. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all the other artists on the hop by using those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.